guys, Brad from Alberta Boys here. Excited to bring season two of Alberta Boys TV to you. thing it's, it's to show you what Alberta boys is about to show you the inside of what building a business within a entrepreneurial province that is Alberta is like you're gonna get to see us grow you're gonna get to see us get more gear uh, learn get some new tricks and we're just so happy to have you join us thank you <laughs> So the first and foremost thing, I love people. So to find an industry where I get to do what I love, working on vehicles and working with people and meeting new people, I'm very happy to be part of that. Uh, we have a great client of ours. He has had multiple vehicles in the shop. His family's had multiple vehicles in the shop. And he brought in a 1972 GMC. To roll into the shop, excitement filled the air. We were like, ah, here comes something different, something new. We work on vehicles often that go up, but rarely do they go down. So we knew we had a change according to what we usually do. There she is. Ah, so what have we got ourselves here? The uh, 1972 uh, C2500, uh, it's a three quarter ton, eight bolts. Uh, got a 402 big block in it. Yeah, it's a, it is pretty good shape for its year. I mean, the truck's uh, 48 years old now, so. 48 years old, yeah. But you know what the funny thing about these things is? I never thought about blind spots, because like you have like a massive blind spot. <laughs> just gonna stick your head out of the window. Yeah, I can't see much. I was talking a little bit on the phone, and uh, what I was kind of thinking of, I want to shorten the box, yep, yep. shorten the frame, and then I want to drop the rear end down, um, kind of make it flush with this one, um, fix some of the rest spots on her, and give her Alberta Boys touch. I guess. Give, her, give her a paint job and make her look pretty. She's originally in a Cal or truck from the state, so she's from California. Uh, I've owned her for 10 years now, but just an old farm truck, but I want to make her uh, a little show truck. I, I didn't realize you had her for that long. I know. 10 years. I know. So how old were you when you bought it? Uh, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> so I leave the beard on, you know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, she looks really good. So after a short amount of time, and we decided we weren't just going for a paint job, it was something I never anticipated to bring into the shop this early. Uh, and with the opportunity and the client, I knew that this was the right time to do it. But throughout the episodes here, you're gonna see the progression of this truck and how it moves forwards. Well, how much are we thinking about shortening uh, the box and the frame? Well, I think, um, so I bought a kit already. Um, I wanna do, I think it's, there's 12 inches in the back and the eight inches in the front, I believe what it is. But there's a kit there. Um, I don't want to tackle it myself because I don't have time. Yep. But um, yeah, you guys, you guys know what to do. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. And then lower it down. We'll take the leaf springs off, put it underneath the axle. Yeah, do um, flip it. Yeah, flip it. And then I think it will drop her down about three and a half inches of the rear end, yeah. and she'll be pretty, pretty level there. And then, um, yeah, I think that's kind of where I want to go for right now. Oh man, she'll be looking slick. Oh yeah, buddy, I love the metal, metal dash. I can see they've done uh, gas tank relocation on you. That way you don't have the explosion tank behind the, uh, yeah, behind behind the cab. <laughs> no more smoking inside, I guess. No. <laughs> My family has always been entrepreneurs, but it's been difficult. When I grew up, we didn't have money. Uh, and when I was 13, I wanted a dirt bike. And I said, Dad, I, I'd love a dirt bike. And he's like, well, son, I don't have money to give you for a dirt bike, but I have $7 for you for an ad in the paper. And when I tell you I did everything, I did everything. Turkey barns, chicken barns, framing, roofing. Uh, and then I was working at Turkey Barn, and honestly, the turkeys were much bigger than me. And I think the farmer looked at me and said, you know what, this kid's pretty scared of these turkeys. Let's get him scraping fences. And he goes, well, good job. 
paint my sheds? So I went out and I painted his sheds. And he goes, well, good job. You paint my barn? And this is a 40 foot barn. When I was 13, I hadn't grown yet. So I'm sitting like five foot nothing. And uh, I asked my dad, dad, would you help me paint this barn? He's like, yeah, son, I'll help you paint that barn. And so he painted the barn. The barn turned into a house. Got a job at the paint store I was buying paint from. Spring came around and the phone started ringing. And Farmer Joe told Farmer Blow. And Rumpel's painting and drywall was born. And that was what started the entrepreneurial spirit that's within me. Because I saw something that my hands started and it turned into a business. At one point in time, that company employed 27 people. And that was what started me knowing that there's nothing I can't achieve if I try. Failure is nothing but a stepping stone to the right direction. I knew that I wanted to do something that had to do with people, because I love people. My favorite part about being in a band was the signing tent. We got to stand there and invite people in, sign autographs, sign CDs, and honestly just take photos of people and meet new people. So I knew I had to be in this realm. And so I had a cousin that was working for one of the other companies I was currently running, and I told him, hey, you have an auto body background, don't you? And he's like, yes, I do. He's like, you no longer work for this company that I own. You work for a new company that we're starting. And Alberta Boys was born. Uh, and I knew uh, that this was a passion that I could grow. You know what, I was also thinking we should do something in the bed, like, uh, and I'm, I'm open up to anything, but do something cool with like an oak floor bed. Um, maybe cut these wheel wells out and maybe drop it, like see how see far when it can drops drop it where down. it sits. Yeah. Well, that sounds really cool. Like, do something different. So that yeah. way, like it's, it's cool, it's unique, it's classic, but at the same time, something yeah. that yeah, we can be nice. like, yeah, look, no one else has this. No. After talking with a client for a bit, we realized he didn't just want a paint job. He wanted a hot rod. He wanted something unique, custom, and nothing like he'd ever seen. So now the challenge was to find the style the client liked. So that way we knew we were making what he liked, but something that's within our range of style because we have a way that we create and we don't want to force something. It needs to be very natural, moving forwards in a artistic way. If, you want, if I want to do it, I want to do it right. You know, I don't want to, don't want to cheap out. But. Yeah, 100%. they did a tank relocation on this thing. We have bolts that we can't access and so we're trying our best to get to it without having to drop the fuel tank. Oh yeah, there's a lot that's not tightened at all. So everybody ready? Yeah. Three, two. We got, we're stuck on <laughs> We got, we're stuck on <laughs> Just nutted myself. <laughs> oh yeah, it's super light. Yeah. They made them uh, maybe sturdy back in the day. Yeah, that's for sure. There we go. Now this is what we have to work with. We instill in the company to make sure we have a team of people that are gonna click, but everybody with a different skill set to make sure that everybody brings something different to the team. We have Justice, he's an aspiring manager. He's a young guy, came from the auto body world. He's a journeyman tech, and he's really looking to do something different with himself outside of just working the trade. He's a fun loving guy, more excited than me. And that's hard to say. Been in the auto body industry for almost eight years now. Um, basically, I jumped into the trade, detailing vehicles, and then I uh, lasted like a month, and then I started prepping for a couple months, and then went on to being on the body side, and I've been on the body side pretty much ever since. Basically, I got into the customization world because I got tired of working on the typical RNIs and the repairs with the insurance world. Basically, I jumped over to the customization world to take on new challenges and basically grow myself. Working with Brad has really helped grow my self-esteem. Um, it's helped grow me as a person. And basically, I've taken on managing and help organizing the team to make things 
go forward as a team together. keeps us going. If you're not starving and you're not naked, you need to thank a farmer. We went down to a fifth generation farm here in Alberta. And it was an education for me, to be honest with you. So how long has, uh, how long has the, the farm been in the family? Uh, it be since 1918, so that's 103 years now. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been here quite a while. I mean, this, this place we've had since 22. 1922. Kyle and I would be fifth generation. Fifth generation. Yeah. So where uh, where did it originally start then? Uh, the farm originally started about half mile west of here, up on top of the hill. If you look that way, you can see the pump jacks and stuff up there. It's kind of roughly in that area. And, and you said this was one yeah, of the original this buildings. Building's original. Uh, you can actually Let's go if you go peek. inside it. And also, it was it was at the original homestead. Yeah, it was at the original homestead. So this is from 1918. You can kind of see where yeah, it you was see split. where they split it. Okay, so so that, how did they how do they move it here? Well, they stick it on uh, they stick it on like runners or something, and they drag it down here with horses. <laughs> either that, either that, or like an old tractor on steel wheels kind of thing, like yeah. the old Massey. Crazy! Oh yeah, you can see right here. Yeah, they split but, it. Yeah, you can see the split right there. Well, there's not much nice. in there. It's the old hay shed now, but that is cool. Like even just seeing what's in there, the first thing I think of is like, man. You got an old boat in there too. <laughs> Grandpa, Grandpa made that in high school. Even no way. I know he made that in grade seven. Great clients of ours. They have brought, the dad has been here. The brothers have been here. First guys to test out a clear product we were developing. They're a family that has been with us since the company started. But yeah, no, 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 I think that pig barn there, that's an old pig barn. That was one of the original buildings as well. Got moved down here and uh, actually it used to be a tunnel underneath of it for the pigs to go out about 300 yards to the south. A tunnel? Southeast. I never even heard of that before. So they could go out to the slough there for water. Huh. I think the last time we had pigs on this place was probably late 70s, early 80s. Oh yeah, okay. Something like that, because when my, when my grandpa first started farming, we took over from his dad. He bought the Ford dealer in 67-ish. Oh, I didn't know your family was in the dealership game. Uh, oh, not until about mid-70s. And then while he was working there, grandma was here farrowing 110 pigs herself. <laughs> She's a hardworking woman. Yeah, that, those pigs, horses, cattle. Well, here we have your Green. your yearlings. Yeah, well, these are these yearling, are yearling bulls that we... Good sized boys right here. <laughs> Yeah, so I first uh, started talking to Brad about four years ago and I brought my 2012 Ram in for some work. Uh, just got it from the dealer and it was, you know, there's some rust on it and stuff like that. And we kind of ended up working together on it and uh, got, to, got it to where I want it. Could put some kickbacks and we actually ended up developing the smooth body liner with that truck and uh, was able to work with it and improve it through over the years. So now, as of today, the smooth liner is one of the top selling features of this shop, which is incredible. It was very fun to be a part of. Out of here, he's like, what's that long haired hippie doing here? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go over here, let's go check out some of your equipment. Yeah, for sure. The tools of the trade. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it says, is this an old family tractor? Yeah, that's an old Massey 25. Oh, I gotta check that out for a second. <laughs> I like machinery, man. Well, this is the parts tractor. It's basically a block. Uh, yeah, that's basically yeah, it's all It's solid, yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, no, they're, they're interesting tractors. I mean, there was no electric start back in the no. day, so you got yourself a crank handle on the front. No, this is one of the originals. So this was Gramps? Uh, or, or a parts tractor of Grandpa's type? Grandpa slash great grandpa, yeah. Oh, yep. I do believe Kyle came in, and he was maybe like our sixth, seventh client. And honestly, intimidating, because him and his brother come in, they looked at the truck after we were finished and they picked that thing apart. They tried very hard to find faults. And after they came to us the second time, I was like, man, here comes these guys. And they have a particular eye. But we earned their trust. 
So when the second vehicle came in, it was a handshake. We exchanged some money and they walked away because they knew that we care the most about quality and people. And it's something that we try to instill within our clients that everybody's a raving fan. We just finished up this beautiful 2020 Patriot Blue Limited. We are so excited to show you. We have all sorts of goodies packed into this truck. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, all right, yeah. Let's go see this one. Okay, here we go. Well, bam! <laughs> she turned out flipping good, man. It turned out really good. Oh, the color match turned out perfect. So uh, over the years, I guess I've brought about a total of four vehicles here. I brought my first truck here four years ago, my 2012 Ram. Uh, so when I bought my 2020 here, when uh, as soon as I got it, I was like, hey, Brad's the only one I want to touch it. It's not going to anybody else. And uh, well, it, is, it didn't disappoint. It was uh, top notch work, no problems with it whatsoever. Just show quality right off the hop, absolutely stunning. Just perfect color match, like couldn't ask anything more about it. Oh, hey guys. Oh, they're coming, they're interested now. It almost doesn't matter what animal it is. If it's baby, it's cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Past years when COVID wasn't a thing, when we were showing cattle and stuff like that, I'll pick some of my top top picks that I'll halter break and get ready to take them to shows and stuff like that. Like I'll take, right, we'll, we'll take them out to Agribition and Regina, Farm Fair in Edmonton. You guys do you guys do, do that kind of stuff. I didn't know uh, if that was something like We went to Camrose. We were going to go to Medicine Hat. We were gonna go to Denver here one of these years. Yeah, Den Denver's Denver's a goal, but Denver Denver's expensive a long ways to go. So what's that, Denver? Uh, it's, that's the uh, national, national National Western Stock Show. It's the biggest stock show in the U.S. Oh, Next crazy. to Fort Worth. Got to try and get a truck show in at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> They say it takes five years for a company to make profit. And as a person that's been busting hump on this company for the past five years, I can tell you that's true. We're constantly just, just making it. Often I look at the team and I go, hey guys, it's payday in a week. And if you'd like to get paid, that truck has got to leave. Uh, and you might look at what we're doing and think that's not a reality, Brad. That's not how it goes. It's the truth. This comes with a risk. It's like being a gambling person, but you're gambling on yourself. And when I tell you that I know I'm coming through, I know I'm coming through. Beautiful. Well, now we're gonna be on to getting ready to chop. We're gonna take it, we're gonna loosen these cab mounts so that way we can lift up the back of the cab and uh, we're gonna start looking into our cut points. Beauty. So the reason we're doing everything with a ratchet 
is uh, on old trucks like this, you tend to break bolts. Holy, look how short your threads are. Yeah, looks like someone... Uh, looks like that's been broken in the past. Yep, broken and uh, cut off, actually. So they threaded it back in with that little thread. Oh, yeah. Good time. Once I pull this one out, we'll know how long it's... Uh, Supposed to be? No, this one's spinning. Is it? We're gonna have to pull the seat out. Mm. We are gonna... Oh, well, good news. The, uh, the seat's not bolted down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God. You wanna come out oh, my gosh. the seat? <laughs> Holy smokes. That thing so it makes sense why that other one, the cab mounts were so short, because they literally only have that much thread. They got nothing compared on there. Nothing compared to new vehicles, but I mean, look when we look at the what that's looking like, we would have wanted to replace that anyways. Yeah. That's so freaking rusty. Doesn't look very safe. I'd say go ahead, support that frame, and start looking at what we need to do with this. I will take and get those rear ends off, and then I'll come and join you and we'll start getting ready because we're gonna have to remove some uh, some rivets out of the way and then we're gonna mount this and then we're on to cutting the frame. As we took it on and we brought it in, we learned why people don't give quotes for these kind of jobs, why they don't give a price. Be sure to check us out next week. We got a new episode coming out, 72. You're gonna see continue throughout the rest of these episodes. We have all sorts of unexpected things where people come in and go, hey, can you do that? You don't want to miss what's coming up because every week is going to be something new. We have to make a new episode next week and we're not quite sure what we're going to do. <laughs> That's reality TV, folks.